Well, hello, boys again, girls. <laughs> I forgot. To, I screwed up the first five words. Unbelievable. It's okay. Uh, we have Steel Flyers here again, and I am friggin' so loving it. He, he's come back again. We, we Our last uh, episode, we had some great stuff on the Buffalo Sabres ownership. And we like, we're going to keep on going with that flavor. I like that perspective. It's something that you don't hear out there. It's an angle that we don't see too often. And uh, I think we're just going to keep on going with it. I love looking at teams in the NHL and sports in general from an ownership perspective and why the league is doing the things that they do and how they do the things they do and why they want to do the things that they do. And, uh, yeah, seeing it from that perspective, I quite often, by the way, I'm Pearl of Wisdom. I, okay, the whole land knows that already, but I, might, I should tell you who I am. And also, something I always forget to do. Uh, if you're enjoying this fine programming, don't be afraid to touch that subscribe button. Nobody, I, I, from what I understand, nobody's got the COVID by doing that yet. So, you can do that. <laughs> and, and you can also hit the like button too, and spread this around, spread these fine pearls out to the world. Because uh, I, I, I'll tell you, this guy knows uh, things from a perspective that we we don't often see. That's why I love him. That's why he's uh, a lot of people are. He's growing in podcast. You're doing a podcast tomorrow, right? Already. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for having me once again, man. Uh, I really love uh, doing these with you, man. These have been really great. Um, I can't even tell you how much of an honor it is to be here uh, doing these with you. Um, yeah, I was uh, invited to do um, a podcast with uh, Joe tomorrow, and we're going to talk about some all-time Flyer players since 1996. And uh, so we're going to try that and see how that's going to go and – that should be that should prove to be interesting. So we'll see how yeah. that goes. And it sounds like we both might be on the nitty gritty com podcast coming up sometime. Yeah, Basco, the one of the yeah. in the land right there. Yeah, um, man, um, for sure, Jamie on that one, man. Uh, he uh, invited me to his show for not this coming week, but the following week. So we'll see see how that goes. So the 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 uh, <clears throat> the stuff's starting to rack up now. So. <laughs> Yeah, nitty gritty podcast. Go check it out. Oh yeah, that that is some good stuff, man. Those guys will put you in the right path. All right. So before we got going here, this is what often what we what we do together is we'll talk about a bunch of stuff and then we'll say, you know what, we should hit the record. So <laughs> and that's exactly what we did. We so were, this was the first time. Yeah, this was the first time we were like, hey, let's just hit the record button and just keep talking. So all right. Yeah. So we had to stop and do all the intros and stuff. So, you know, by the way, I'm Steel Flyers. You can reach me uh, at, on Twitter at Steel Flyers. Uh, stay tuned for steel, steelflyers.com coming soon. And stay tuned for a new podcast coming out for me here real soon. So nice. stay tuned for all that good stuff, man. Yeah. All right. So let's – okay. We were talking before. First of all, we were kind of going into the host city thing and how things might work that way. Yeah. Uh, since we last talked about it, it's sort of changed a little bit, the possibilities. A uh, few teams have been – counted out one that we thought pretty pretty good chance or and well, maybe uh, not like, you but me <laughs> yeah so I'll, yeah. look i'll take all i will take all the blame for that one that was my prediction i i even tweeted that out today to Bascal and said look that blows my theory completely out of the water so i was completely and utterly wrong so yeah. there you go that's why well, i am not right. the prognosticator and you are that was the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Minnesota Wild as well. Minnesota's out as well. Yeah, Minnesota Dallas is out. Um, mm -hmm. It's narrowed down to, uh, I'll say the three American cities are Los Angeles, Vegas, yeah. and Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then the Canadian cities are Toronto, Vancouver, and Edmonton. Right. So, so. Well, that's what we're narrowed down to right now. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, the good way to go from here is I'm Canadian and you're American, so we can go from both perspectives. Uh, from the Canadian perspective, uh, it, I think the biggest problem, and, and you'll mention this when you talk about the American side, is facilities is an issue. Um, from the Canadian perspective, if we're going to go pure safety and just make it work, we got to go to Edmonton. Uh, I live in Edmonton here, and there is virtually no COVID cases happening. We're not seeing a huge escalation by any stretch in this second well, wave. Well, that's really good. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Vancouver, maybe a little more so. Um, again, I think they'd have the facilities. Um, the only, maybe the facilities as far as uh, hotels and stuff like that. But they're, well, this is one thing we brought, their farm system, their farm team, which would be the other big practice facility place where we're going to likely need lots of practice facilities is in Utica. So that <laughs> Where's the... doesn't really, really sit well. That's, see, that's exactly why I think – I'm pretty sure that's exactly why I think Pittsburgh was ruled out yeah. because they have the hotels. They have the – there's great facilities there at the PPG Center, and it's relatively new. It was built within the last five years. But their farm team is the Wilkesbury Wilkes Penguins, Wilkes yeah, yeah. and that's on the other side of the state. Mm -hmm. So by bus or car, that's a couple of hours. Even by plane, it's like forty-five minutes. But now yeah. you have to travel, you know, between Pittsburgh and Wilkesbury to to. So that's probably why Pittsburgh was was uh, discounted as one of the hub cities. Right. So, but I agree with you a hundred percent, and and that's why you uh, continuing looking at Canada, you have to look at Toronto. Uh -huh. uh, look, you and I both agreed that Edmonton put the best proposal out there, and of all of the cities to have NHL, to me, Edmonton makes the most sense. I agree, ex ex if they can do the facility thing, because. Uh, they don't have their, you know, our minor league team is not in the Edmonton area. It's so we, That's I, I don't be... know, facilities would be dicey. We do have a lot of facilities here in a lot of ways. I don't, I, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I would say it's dicey. But you brought up Toronto. The Toronto Marlies is their minor league affiliate. It's right there in Toronto. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the only truly East Coast city. That you could do, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because Chicago technically is not an East Coast city. Yeah. And Chicago is not even in the Eastern Conference, right? They're in the West. Right. So why why would you remove you know what I mean? I don't understand why they've removed certain cities. So that's not on me, that's on the NHL, but if you want to have geographically an eastern city and a western city, which makes the most sense, right? I mean, logically. So that opens you up to you can either have one American city and one Canadian city, which is what they want, mm -hmm. ideally, right? Ideally, that's what they would want. I, I, you know? I, I maybe, yeah. Um... I'm not really sure about that because of travel and stuff like that. I think the main reason why Canada is being considered so heavily now is because of the spikes in COVID in the United States. The United States. Like yeah. And yeah. Toronto has, is, is, is seen a spike, but can, for, for big cities, probably not too, sh not too bad. Like it's too. Yeah. Too bad, yeah. There's not, it's not even really showing up. Um, too terribly much it's not even showing up on the on the spike map you know what i mean i'm, yeah. I'm looking to, at that right now um through bing and statistically there's it, it's toronto is not even it's not even considered on the yeah. hot spot area you know what yeah. i mean so i can almost guarantee the way things are the way the spikes are happening and stuff like that to me it seems like it's almost for sure that Toronto will be that team in the East. It really does seem that. Um, and then we go uh, in the United States. What is Vegas? Like, how is, uh, you would think a tourist place like that, COVID would be like rampant, but uh, they've cut off all their tourism there. Like, how is that? Uh... There you go. I mean, you just heard it right there. They cut everything off and shut everything down. And that's been the best thing. And right. now there's, there's no, there's nothing. I mean, it's not on the hot. It's not on the spike list. It's not you hard to hear about any cases happening there. There's been, you know what I mean? It's it's it, Nevada was not a very hard hit city or state. And I think it has a lot to do with the climate. Oh, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Because Nevada is desert. Yeah, it's dry and it's hot. And it's dry and it's hot. And so 
and and we know from science that COVID doesn't last very. It's it's very um, it's not very heat resistant. Well, I I didn't know that, but thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah, I heard something about it, but I didn't know if it was an actual truth or just you know something the social media likes to spread around. So, from what I've been from now, these are uh, doctor stuff that I've been reading that say that the 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 COVID germ itself is not very doesn't last very well to temperatures above you know eighty ninety degrees on surfaces. Okay. Well, then okay. that would make sense. So, right. So it, it, it seems to me that we've already solved the problem. It's going to be Vegas and Toronto. There you got it. Ha! You heard it here first, man. Pearl of Wisdom dropping it. Yeah, exactly. So everybody in the land already knows. You can just go tell Mr. Gary Bettman what's happening. And, you know, he probably just doesn't fly know everybody yet. out there. He probably doesn't even know yet. Yeah, he probably doesn't probably even know yet. Well, to, ah! I feel, I'm sure he's watching. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hi, Gary. Gary. How you doing? Now you know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, right. Who knew? By the Who way, knew? just to let you know, I am very impressed with what the NHL has done. Okay. When you look at the debacle of the Major League Baseball, and then you look at what the National Basketball Association is doing, the NBA, and football, NFL is just waiting. You know, they don't have to do anything. They're not playing games. Major League Baseball is trying to start trying, <laughs> uh, trying. I think I think they approved a sixty game season, so we, mm-hmm. we we might actually get some baseball this year. And the NBA now that that really kind of blows me away. Why they would say we're going to have one hub city and we'll just bring everybody to the hub city and we'll just let y'all play. Mm-hmm. This is why I'm impressed with what the NHL did. Number one, they came out with a 29-page document that explained everything about what they were going to do, which phase they were going to do it in, and how they were going to implement those phases. Mm -hmm. And I can't say enough about what the ownership of the NHL has been able to put together to present to Bateman so that he could present that to us. Yeah. Okay? Because let's face it. Exactly what you said. He's the representation of the ownership. So well, I said previously before we started. Yeah, yeah. So that's where, right where that comes into play, brother, right where that comes into play. They had to get approval by ownership to do all this stuff and go through all this stuff, and it had to go all through them anyway. You know what I mean? So here we go. Yeah. Bring everybody into the, to the home cities, get everybody tested, get them all negative, then take them to the hub cities where all the other teams have that same protocol. Now you've got, what did we say last time? 600 people for, for 24 teams. They're allowed to carry what? 50 total people with uh, staff, coaches, trainers, and team, right? I think it's a total of 50 people. So 50 people times 24 divided by two. So that's how many in each hub city. So there you go. That's a lot of people suddenly in the hub city. And then you also have to take into account all of the concession workers or all the people that are cleaning and all the people that are doing all that stuff that's in the stadium or wherever the facilities are. So that's mm-hmm. probably another 120 people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So wow. now all these people are tested negative and they're all in one little hub city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It really stinks because you're not going to be able to see your family and, you you know, whatever, whatever. But if you want to play hockey. Yeah. So now you're starting to see some of the NBA players opting out. You're seeing some of the WNBA players opting out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are we going to see that in the NHL? Are we going to see players opting out because of whatever fear, whatever? We, we sort of are. There's a couple guys that were basically on the bubble as far as European, like Roman Polak in Dallas has decided to stay in Europe, but he was almost at the end of his career. Uh, we haven't had anybody significant say that they're opting out at this moment. So since we opened this bag here and you brought up Mr. Gary Bettman, and we like to talk about ownership and how the league works and all of those things like that. We, we, See, I set you up so well. <laughs> segue, segue all day. So, <laughs> so anyways, yeah. Um, 
Gary Bettman, uh, I've, I think he's the best commissioner in sport. And yes, I do. Here's the thing. If we could get into baseball someday, I will, because I have a theory about all this that happened with baseball, with the cheating and why there was only a slap on the wrist and all that. Uh, I'll open up the bag and we can get into it some other time. But I believe that there is a lot of that going on and the owners know it and they want to shut that door as fast as they possibly can. And that's what happened here. And the commissioner looked like an absolute moron, but that's what he's paid to do. So now let's open up Gary Bettman. Gary Bettman is paid by the NHL. Yes, he's not paid by by the owners per se, but without the owners, they don't have an NHL. So uh, let's just say that the owners have a lot of say. And um, they vote on how much he gets paid for. They vote on how much he gets paid. Mm-hmm. So, so that would be a lot of say. Yeah. <laughs> I think Gary Bedman has balanced things out extremely well. Now you could say, do, are the do we have the best owners? Is that why this has happened, or do we just have a fantastic commissioner who's a great commission, a uh, great communicator, and is able to get uh, the best out of situations for the owners? And make the league look good at the same time as best he possibly can. From what I've seen in the window of, the, of Gary Bettman. And by the way, when Gary Bettman speaks, people boo. And I just like, okay, whatever, do what you want. But I think that is unfounded. Uh, in this situation, he's shown how, uh, how well uh, he can put things together and, and uh, be able to uh, kind of outshine the rest of the league. Uh, in, of all the big of, four. Of all the other big four, yeah. He's really outshined the rest of the league. And I think he's done it in – he's looked bad. There was a strike. And there was uh, the time when we had – I think the biggest one we talked about was expansion. And that was difficult. And he's looked bad. Uh, The strike really put a bad taste in my mouth too, though. I was just going to let you continue. But I wanted to say that the strike put a real bad taste in my mouth too about Bateman. But I, I, with what, how things were handled with this whole pandemic and this whole shutdown, I, I've been in very much impressed, very much impressed with how the league has been handled, um, how they've come up with a plan and they're sticking to the plan. And if you want to play hockey, this is the best plan we got. We worked with everybody. We got everything in line. This is the best way we can do it. If you want to play hockey, this is how it's going to have to be. Yeah. I I think what Gary Bettman does best is he understands motivation and he understands what motivates all sides in every situation. And he doesn't judge it. He just simply takes the motivation and tries to show all sides that under the best light, that this motivation is pretty much necessary. He's able to convince, seems able to convince people of the necessity that cert, all sides have to be taken account account when making decisions. Some, some of the things about Gary Bateman, I'm going to agree to disagree. Yeah. There's I some of the things. Hear, I want, I yeah. Want no, to no, it, there's some things that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And, and the whole strike thing was one. Mm-hmm. And look, we talked before about the whole Olympics thing. That was another thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about mm-hmm. not letting the players go play in the Olympics. Well, okay. I mean, you know, look, I understand the ownership has investments in you and everything else like that, but let's face it. We're trying to grow the game and mm-hmm. you not letting the best representative, the best representatives of this game to go do that is kind of, childish in my book okay i'm also going to say something else too and this is something that i haven't heard anybody or seen anybody talk about and i wanted to make this point the last time and i didn't get a chance the way that and this is one of the things that i agree with bettman about the contracts that he got for the tv okay okay got us got got the nhl onto nbc for what six years Mm -hmm. right or something crazy like that and got the nhl paid set up player uh sharing and all that stuff right so the players get what 48 percent or 
what you know, whatever the CBA was, and you know, yeah, I so, don't know the, all the details, but yeah. yeah, but I think it's like forty something percent or whatever they get uh, as far as revenue sharing and all those stuff, and all the teams and all that stuff give revenue sharings and stuff like that. So that was one of the things getting that that TV contract. That's been the biggest difference between all four of the big four. The NHL and the NFL all have guaranteed television contracts that are, guess what, already paid. Right. The NHL technically is not really losing that much money. The only people that are losing money is ownership right now because there's no butts in the seats. Right. Right? Okay. So they're not pulling tickets. They're not pulling revenue that way. Okay. Mm-hmm. And 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 because the playoffs aren't happening yet, they're not pulling that either because we all know that the playoffs are huge uh, financial gains for teams, you know, mm-hmm. and they're not pulling that yet, but it's coming and they won't be able to because – they won't, their fans aren't going to be allowed to be in the stands. Uh-huh. So the only thing that's really saving them is the TV market and this, the internet. What, yeah. what, what can we stream? And NBC has opened up a bunch of apps and, you know, now you can stream games and stuff like that. And, you know, you can get the NHL uh, Sunday ticket or whatever and all that other happiness. And you can, you know, watch all your out-of-market games and all that other stuff. In the Major League Baseball, none of that money is paid or guaranteed. In the NBA, none of that money is paid or guaranteed. The NFL and the NHL are the only ones that have their TV contracts paid. Right. (laughs) Nobody's talking about that. Yeah, it it changes changes the dynamics for sure. Um, Which is why the Major League Baseball is stepping all over themselves to try to get some games in and, you know, and they're airing their dirty laundry out in the media. Come on. Are you see now nobody's going to go watch baseball. Yeah, it's, there is a, the, the, the dynamics of major league baseball right now is an absolute disaster. And I'm not sure that it's a, a commissioner issue. I <clears> think <throat> like these, I, I think it, they, they need a whole new restructuring of how they do business there. And, and you could even say that from a greater perspective, the game should needs to evolve in a yeah. lot of ways. In a lot of yeah. ways, the game needs to evolve because yeah. it's losing steam to, to uh, NFL football mm-hmm. and uh, and stuff like that. And here's something else. Uh, I like, like I said, I am a Batman fan, but there is another dynamic that isn't to do with Batman at all here. The NHL is a is is not the h- hugest market sports out sport out there, so it's a little easier for a commissioner like Gary Bettman. To, are they what third to, maybe to motivate a lot of this to say we are not you know they're not in a situation like the NFL where they could say okay we're not going to play and they know when they come back their viewership is not going anywhere right. Uh, now, Major League Baseball, on the other hand, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. But uh, maybe basketball. I think I, I think people are they've got their diehards, and that's it. Hockey is in a position right now where they are they are moving fast, and I give Bettman a lot of credit for that. I think he's done very well to grow the league, but we can't slow down right now, and everybody knows that. So in that way, I'm going to give Gary Bettman a little bit of a. Uh, unplugged i guess you could say because he has everybody motivated in the right direction because of the situation of any the nhl hockey in general right now so yeah. a lot of people are going to be like yes we got to get going okay gary you do this we'll listen to you and blah 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 blah, blah. you change that and you say that it's just canadian market and we 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 uh we're well supported in the Canadian market and we don't even really need growth if we don't want to in Canada. And people are going to watch as soon as that TV's on, you're not going to lose people. I'm sorry. Things may be different. Things when hockey different. night in Canada is still the biggest watch television program. I'm sorry, but <laughs> hockey is going nowhere in Canada. No <laughs> yeah, you don't need to sell hockey in Canada. really. Duh. 
<laughs> but even that, even with that, Gary has been able to evolve the game in a lot of ways. We have a faster game now. They've started taking fighting out a little bit, uh, which really, as much yeah. as I enjoy fighting, um, I, I I didn't like the the goonery wasn't going to sell. It made us too much like okay. a lower hockey league. Okay, you know? now I'm with you on the goonery. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you on that. And and look, you have to look at a lot. You know, you look back at a lot of the old Philadelphia teams, and you know the Broad Street Bullies starts right there. And there was a lot of that on our team, and that's fun. what. But, and that's what fun. it was. But that's what made our team good is that we had guys that could throw down. Yeah. And you couldn't come into Philadelphia and expect to get away with anything because there would be somebody there standing there. Yeah. Schultz would be standing there or Bashir would be standing there. You pick somebody from any generation of flyers and there will be somebody standing there. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yes, getting that out of the game, I think, has been good. Because if you're going to be able to throw down, like I'll give you a perfect example. Mm-hmm. Radko Gudis. Yep was, man, all that guy did was just go around and hit people and fight. And he mm-hmm. just couldn't really, I mean, he, he didn't really play hockey. And he just really didn't, you know what I mean? And getting coached helped him tremendously mm-hmm. to the point where he was able to be trade bait. And, and now he's a good defenseman that can stay at home if he needs to, but can also skate the puck up and score if he needs to. Yep. You know, but is not afraid to stand there and take block shots and is going to be the hits leader on your team. Well, he's no Niskin. No, he's no, but. <laughs> and that's who he got traded for. So. Right. But I'll tell you, though. Beautiful trade. Not, yeah. Beautiful trade, but not. There's way more offensive upside on Niskanen and leadership side on Niskanen, but it's virtually the same game. Okay, they're both defensemen. They both can skate the puck up. They both can score a little bit. But I think Niskanen has way more leadership. He's older, and I think he has more offensive upside. Yeah, I think his overall game is just better than. Agreed. I, I hundred percent. I understand why Washington made the trade. They they they've got salary cap issues, and they got the best player they could for the dollar that they could afford, and they got a couple. I think a draft pick or stuff back too. And uh, yeah, and I understand why Philly made the trade because uh, we're good. we're getting. I understand why Philly made the trade because you had a very young defense. Uh, you needed a more experienced defense there. Hextall's uh, "Let's be patient and grow this a little bit" was wearing thin. We were going to get into that, but we're getting running a little long here. And uh, um, what I, I, running I, long? <laughs> check, yeah, I know we're already almost thirty minutes here, but wow. uh, I know it just goes by so fast. But uh, this is what Chuck Fletcher said. Let's bring in some veterans, and we—I I think we can make a go of it from here. We and still build the team. The interesting thing that's going to be in Philly is—is is he going to be able to build a, a, a prospect pool or work on the prospect pool that Hextall made there, and make this team be able to be ultra competitive for the next seven or eight years? That'll be—he's signing them. Right. He's signing them kids. So yeah, oh, he's yeah. giving them contracts. So that's all good, man. You know, yeah. that's all good. All so, I do know is that, it, that the Flyers are in a good spot right now. But uh, yeah, so anyways, where we're getting back uh, Like here. I said, though, you know, I, I, I'm giving total props to Bateman and the NHL for how they've handled this, for how they've come out and done this. I think it's been the best thing in sports going because, yeah, we've had a couple of players that have tested positive. Okay, and it's not been the end of the world, you know. Yes. Oh my gosh, we had a couple of players tested positive. Oh my it a, god, it was amazing. It, it, without getting into everything that's going on in the world right now, if you want to see a polarization of what happens when people react to things, that Matthews thing when he getting COVID, geez, all over social media, the playoffs are over. It's like. You thought that they were going to test people and nobody was going to be positive? What, are you crazy? Of course people are going to be positive. I mean, geez. That's what they're saying. You know, how can you not bring a bunch of people that have come from all over the place and not have positive tests? Of course you're going to have positive You're, you're going to have positive tests. It's just going to happen. It's just the way it is. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to come in and they're going to do the test. They're going to be tested every day. And we were getting this before. What, what's going to happen? 
own everybody's on the same page here these guys are gonna be tested every day and these guys are going to be watched you're going there and you are going to be watched nobody's going to the bar nobody's going wherever you stay in your hotel room get your ph ps4s out or whatever you got to do you my <laughs> friend are not moving and yeah. you know what I think it's going to go as far as to say if you're caught outside of there, you're not going to be able to play in the rest of the playoffs. That's it. If we find you in, there's going to be no zones. And if we find you there, you're not playing. That's going to be are. interesting. That's going to be very, very interesting. I want to touch on one point real quick that you made that we haven't even discussed. And I think it's a serious, serious major point. It doesn't matter which hub city is selected. It doesn't matter which one. It could be any one of the six hub cities. And this is something that we talked about last time, but I wanted to I wanted to reiterate this because the point that you made is that if Las Vegas is selected as the hub city, where do the Golden Knights play? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll get in, we'll finish up on this one because uh, there I have heard I don't know apparently other people haven't heard this. Uh, yeah, because I, I haven't heard a peep. Either. Jamie Basco did yeah. about it. I should have wrote down who it was that was saying it. Oh my gosh, because because that guy, boy, he just has the I, I can't even get on tweet fast enough when there's information he's posting about stuff going exactly. on. So. And I'm talking about other people as well that don't and I, okay, what I what I've heard is that uh, or at least it's been floated out there, is that the home, if you're like, say, for instance, Toronto, Toronto's in the playoffs, right? And let's yep. say the two hub cities are Toronto and Vegas. Yep. The the Western teams are going to play in the East, and the Eastern teams are going to play in the West. So there's no home field advantage at all in that regard. And I think if I think you have to. Now, I don't know what the logistics of all that, because it's going to cost the owners more money for travel and all of those things like that, but... Uh, well, it's only travel know, once. It's only, it's only travel only... once? Yeah. Well, yeah, once you get to the Hub City, you're done traveling, right? So yeah. you're there at least for the duration until they say that you can leave, you know, so you only travel once to get there. Yeah. I guess my only issue with this, that maybe there'd be a problem, is say the Toronto staffing of the arena know that arena... So they're going to still be there, but uh, yeah. So, but they would still staff that same arena. It would just be all different people and all different players. So, well, no, they would keep the people there. The people that work the Toronto Stadium and 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 would work that facility there, yeah, would yeah, stay yeah. there, and yeah. the people that work in whatever other hub city are going to stay there. It's just the players and the and the management and the trainers that would move. Yeah, it's you know what I'm too saying. Much more travel because all the teams have to travel anyways. So the fact that Toronto has to go to Vegas, whatever, and Vegas has, I think it's the only way to do it, and I think it is the way to do it. That's why I, I wanted to talk about this. I do think it's most definitely an advantage to be in your own room. There's just a feeling of the home, and I know you have no fans and all that stuff like that, but there's boards. Do you know the boards? And any player will tell you that the boards in every arena are different. Different, the yep. Ice, you can hear you can hear the boards are different when yeah. you hear the puck go off the side or off the dasher you can hear the sound it's different in every building how it goes off the glass how it clinks between the barriers in the glass you know, yeah. come on it's different like that for every stadium and that's why i picked pittsburgh because that's what, exactly why i picked pittsburgh to be one of the hub cities thinking that very reason right there is that the league and everybody wanted Pittsburgh to be one of the hub cities so that Pittsburgh could play at home. Yeah. I know you were going on that lean. Now it's kind of squirrely. I, I think it's a little, I'm sorry. I was so wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Because of Crosby and all that. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I think even if that was the case, if their heart is in that place, I think that's going a little too far overboard to show it. <laughs> yeah. You so, think maybe? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, but, you know. Uh, but anyways, I um th- But that's why I wanted to get into this. I know, but that's why I wanted to get into this because you made such a great point about hearing that the the hub cities, those home teams would have to play in the exact opposite hub city. Yeah. So 
I am going to be very interested to see how this whole Hub City is supposed to be announced. It's supposed to be announced this week. And how I want to hear if that happens. Because I Your have not. Pittsburgh is our Toronto. Now, yeah. if they were going to do, like, Toronto is the center of the universe when it comes to uh, hockey in Canada. And, oh, it's just, it's, it, there's a lot of uh, stigma attached to that. So, so that makes, that's it, where the Hall of Fame is. That's where the uh, referee, uh, you know, the, the war room is in Toronto. So all calls go through Toronto. So it just makes sense. And it's the only Eastern city. But if you're going to give some team an advantage, there's going to be the, this is like a conspiracy theory that they're, they're, the league is trying to do something to make Toronto win the cup because they're the center of the universe and all of those things like that. I'm saying it would be the Pittsburgh you're talking about would be the same reason for Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> that, that way, that's that's going to be the conspiracy there, because uh, the pair. But you know, if the league was trying to get Toronto to win a cup for the last however many years, there's a one of two things: either they've been very bad at it, or Toronto just has been even horribly bad at even coming close to to doing it, even with all those advantages. I don't think that's the case. I honestly think if the league was going to do something like that, they'd be more inclined to do it to a team like Arizona or one of these teams that really need. Uh, the those markets to really sell. Okay. I, I be more that way. But. Okay, but Toronto's right up there with the number of years between Stanley Cups as the Flyers. It's been longer than forty years, right? Sixty-seven. So nineteen sixty-seven. <laughs> like I said, right up there with Flyers, longer than forty years. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. Arizona's never been to the Cup. Okay, yeah, it's a market they're trying to save, though. That's I understand, and that's why they moved from. They had a place um, out in Sun City, or uh, out close to Tempe, and then they built a brand new facility in Sun City, and that's why they're called the Arizona Coyotes now instead of the Phoenix. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but they they got Arizona to build them a brand new. Uh, stadium facility, the whole nine yards, and so they were like, "Oh well, all right." Um, so now that's why they're the the Arizona Coyotes now instead of the Phoenix Coyotes. So, but yeah. So, anyways, we brought it up. The conspiracy possibility doesn't seem likely to me, but if you want to play around with that, with the, if you're going to play around with that, Toronto would definitely be it. I honestly think they're going to play in opposites. I don't think they're going to give them that home. Home. I think I think that's what's going to happen. They're going to. I disagree. They're going to. I disagree. Okay, good. Now we have finished our. This is the video that you got to hear, boys and girls. I say they're going to play in opposites. He says they're going to play in the same. And yeah. You know what? He can make a good point because if there's a conspiracy thing here, one of the cities that they want to do extremely well would be the Vegas School of Night. You would think. <laughs> Yeah, and you're talking about the most powerful people with money. Toronto being the fact that it's the biggest hockey money you're going to find, and yeah. Vegas just basically the most powerful people in the world are in Vegas. And if right. they want something to happen, they got the money to make it happen. So we will see if we are correct on that. I'm going to take the low road, and I'm going to say they're going to do the right thing and the fair thing, and they're going to do that. And, oh. uh, just like that, kicking me to the curb, huh? So I'm taking the high road. Going to go, no, I'm taking the high road in the sense that for them, oh, okay. not that I'm on right. a higher road than you are. No, no. I'm going to say the league is going to take the high road, but okay. I'm really interested to see who's correct here because this, yeah. be, this will be interesting to see. If you what you say comes out and they stay home, I'd like to see their excuses because that – as to why they're doing that? As to why, yeah. why, yeah, why they're doing that? Yeah, that's going to be I like interesting. To hear, I like to hear how they roll around on that one. We'll, we'll find out. This is our full forty-two percent mine, anyways. Um, this, I, I, this has been fantastic. I love this. I know there's lots of people out there that like to see this lean on sports. There's so much more I'd like to get into, but uh, I'm sure we're 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 approaching the forty-minute mark, and it feels like we've only been talking for ten minutes. Oh my gosh. I know. Wow. So we'll catch you again. Remember to catch the podcast that we mentioned. 
you can po we'll post some links down in the comment section for that if you can give me those and uh, hit the subscribe and the like and spread this around because this is great times have a great day good talks thanks buddy lots of love to you